And we have breaking news now. Freedom Caucus Chair Mark Meadows has uncovered two new texts that implicate the Obama White House and in the initial steps of the Trump campaign investigation. Meadows asking Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein why the October 2016 text between FBI Attorney Lisa Page and former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe were not turned over to Congress as requested and whether the texts are ever being intentionally withheld from lawmakers. Well, joining me now to help uh, shed some light on all of this, Congressman Matt Gates. He serves on a number of uh, very important committees, including Judiciary, Budget, and Armed Services. Congressman, great to have you with us. Let's start with the Meadows revelation in this letter uh, uh, to, uh, to the uh, Department of Justice. What is going on here? It's just one after another. <laughs> And, and the question has to be asked, are, are, you, are you people of justice withholding information? Obviously they are. Yeah, Lou, that question is affirmatively answered that the Justice Department has lacked sufficient uh, production and they've not been sufficiently forthcoming when it comes to messages. You'll recall that there were text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page regarding Strzok's uh, personal friendship with a FISA judge. Those were not uh, national security sensitive and yet they were redacted and not provided to Congress. Also, there, were, there was the famous text message, infamous I should say, where Strzok says no, no, he won't. We'll stop him regarding the Trump presidency. That was not originally produced by the Department of Justice. So this is now a pattern. The Department of Justice is not giving us the information that we're requesting in a timely fashion. When we do get a trickling of information, it's far too heavily redacted, and there have to be consequences as a result. Well, you know, we've been hearing that. Uh, Congressman, you and I both know it. We've heard threats. We've heard them from Nunes. We've heard them from, you know, various people uh, in Congress. And it all comes to nothing. Why should anyone at the Department of Justice or FBI sweat you guys at all? You know, we have got to, uh, I think, get more people on the Republican side in Congress enthusiastic about our oversight responsibilities. I mean, the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, said that Congress has no constitutional authority, uh, you know, to conduct well, he oversight. he says you guys are all extortionists. <laughs> are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, and so, I mean, Lou, like, we need a critical mass of Republicans to favor the sanctions, the contempt, and potentially the impeachment of Rod Rosenstein if we don't see the Justice Department complying with uh, our oversight demands. I well, mean, look, at the end of the day, Lou, it's either elected people or it's unelected people who make the final call. And if unelected people get to make the final decisions regarding their own oversight, we have eroded this republic, and I don't think we should stand for it. Well. I, I agree with you. I don't think, as you well know, I, I don't think we should stand for it at all. Not another minute, not another second. But the fact is, unelected people, as you call them, I call them the deep state, uh, are running all over you guys. Uh, the Department of Justice is running you. The FBI is running you, stalling you for th absolutely frustrating you guys at every turn. And by the way, they worked out a special counsel deal, a witch hunt, First, uh, 11 months of investigation by the FBI into collusion with the Russians between uh, the Trump campaign and the Russians. And then a special counsel, just to add a little zest to it all, that is actually running right now, running every effort to subvert this president. I mean, we're, well, we're, just, look, we're not I, talking I would, rhetorically here. I agree here. with you. This, this, these are unelected uh, folks uh, running the country right now. I agree with your criticism. It is a fair one. But I would add that our oversight work in the Congress has resulted in a, a lot of firings, terminations, demotions. You look, Comey's gone, McCabe, gone, Page and Strzok, gone, Rubicki, who was the chief of staff at the FBI, gone, ask, James am, Baker, am the leaker, gone. You, am I going to hear you cheer for Christopher Wray, the president's choice to succeed him? Uh, because he looks every bit as recalcitrant uh, and uncooperative as James Comey. He isn't quite as cute and precious. Uh, in his testimony, uh, but he's every bit as smug and smirking. Uh, I would say that Christopher Ray has got an opportunity to do the right thing. I would hope that he would seize it. To date, there have been things he's done that I've been in agreement with uh, regarding, you know, standing up for the rank and file at the FBI, but there is no defense for the actions of Strzok and Page and Comey and McCabe. And uh, I would hope that Christopher Ray would want to get to the bottom of this as President Trump's pick to lead the FBI. We need more out of him. Your criticism is a fair one, and I'm trying to encourage him to do the right thing. 
Well, good for you. And I, I want to turn, if we may, to all of the criticism that now is focused on the president of the United States. Uh, he apparently didn't meet the expectations of the Dems, the left, the left-wing national media, rhinos, uh, and conservatives. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how he'll ever be able to withstand such such uh, a, a calamity as not meeting the expectations of those fine <laughs> Americans. Well, uh, President Trump has a unique style, and sometimes the game you're watching is not always the game being played. You'll remember in North Korea, he was calling Kim Jong-un little rocket man, while at the same time, he was establishing a platform for diplomacy and negotiation, and now it's almost a year uh, since we've had the last nuclear test in North Korea. And so here, you may have witnessed the president being perhaps a little lighter than we would have expected on Putin publicly, but they, they were behind closed doors for a far longer period of time than they were in front of the cameras. The president and Putin both said that the president raised the issue of election meddling. It is my belief that the Russians did meddle in our elections and in elections all over the world. I also think that this country has an unfortunate past uh, as recently as the Obama administration, meddling in elections in Israel, in the Balkans, yeah, in I... coordination with George Soros groups. And so, you know, I think we can all recognize that none of us are virgins here. Uh, you know, the United States and Russia have both meddled in elections, and I think that uh, neither should do that going forward. Forward and we ought to uh, hold both governments accountable whenever that occurs. Well, you know what I think? Everybody ought to be a grown-up, and also they should have triple-digit IQs. Anyone who thinks that the Obama administration wasn't meddling in it, by our count, uh, about seven uh, elections, uh, and that's directly with the One Voice uh, group uh, over the course of years and diverting taxpayer money to fund an outcome that was decidedly not in the uh, national interest, but in the interest of an Obama White House. I mean, where was the outcry? Where was the outrage? Where was the, you know, the wringing of hands and just self-righteous nonsense that is emanating from all of those quarters? And I'm talking about from left to right, the national left-wing media, of course, and not one of them smart enough to understand what was going on in elementary civics, let alone uh, geopolitics in uh, 2018. Well, and as is typical, Lou, the left has missed the big story here on non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. In Iran and in North Korea, right. Russia can be very helpful at bringing pressure to bear so that we don't see widespread Pro proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and the media doesn't want to talk about that at all. They just want to criticize the president instead of focusing on the anti-terrorism and the non-proliferation efforts that I think were very productive today.